Okay, so report to your cloud, right? What's All up? Right. I got one of my buddies here. Um, so we got uh, some things we want to discuss and share some valuable information and insight with you guys. I know um, a lot of you have been watching some of my other videos and even though we may not have met, uh, we mm -hmm. already have some kind of connection. I know a lot of you tell me that you feel like friends already, like you know me and you appreciate the stuff that I'm sharing that no one else is down to share. So this guy, he's one of my friends. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, my name is John, just another regular guy. I was yeah. born in Taiwan, moved to the States when I was younger, lived there for a number of years. And last couple of years, I moved back. And I've always stayed in touch with John over the last couple of years, even though I've been away from the States. And just want to thank you, for John, you know, kind of bringing me on this call, kind of been sharing what it's been teaching me all these years. And we kind of discuss back and forth, you know, what we've um, been learning together on this journey of life. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I mentioned before that I was in a mentorship program with Ty Lopez. And uh, the way I met John was from one of my guys that we went to the first in-person mentorship with Ty and uh, his name was Scott and Scott would come down to Mexico and he yeah. would visit me. And then one time he brought John with me, with him and he came and visited. So uh, from that point on, like at that point he was working, um, I think he was doing Facebook ads for a company yeah. and I gave him some yeah. advice on like, um, I told him, fuck that guy and go do yeah. this yourself and then helped him out of some situations and got him yeah. to become independent. And now he's living overseas, um, doing his business, working for himself. And so that's why I wanted to um, bring him on. And cause he knows he's, he's seen me, my lifestyle, my, he's been to my place and yeah. he actually knows me and we're both entrepreneurs and he's living a digital nomad lifestyle. He's not staying in America. And um, I, nobody knows, uh, only my like close friends know that I've been mm -hmm. writing a book and I gave right. him a copy of my book that I've been writing. I, he's been encouraging me to get my shit out there and I don't really want to. Like, right. I'm, I'm writing it. Yeah, I'm writing it. I'm putting down all my stuff that I've learned and I'm trying to like, kind of like the stuff that I'm sharing in the videos. I put it down in a book, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of private. I ain't trying to be famous or whatever. My life is good. I don't want to be famous. I just want to be rich and I want to do what I want to do and right. like not have people like have the same kind of problems that people have when, you know, when they're popular. I'm not saying I'm famous now or whatever, but I don't want it to get to that point because I already have people um, when I do go to the club or when I go out, I get people coming up to me. And it's kind of mm -hmm. awkward sometimes and like Absolutely. I kind of like that feeling and like I don't give out my social medias and stuff and he's been encouraging me to kind of like go and um, turn this into something because he said that the, the content I've been sharing is so valuable and useful when I've shared with him some of the messages that people are sending and stuff so that's why we're doing this call he got on a call last night after he watched the last video I did on the um, common scams that whores and prostitutes will do to you and Absolutely. Uh, uh, he's all, bro, you got something here, man. He's, he saw the comments. He sees people reaching out to me. So um, maybe you want to share some of the stuff you were saying last night about um, what you learned from the video and what, why you're telling me to go and do what you want me to do. Yeah, so kind of bring it back. So a few years ago, I visited John in Tijuana, Mexico with Scott. And I like to look at people's bookshelves. And I know John has a lot of books. I'm a big reader myself. And when the particular book that stood out on that bookshelf was The Professional Bachelor. Oh, he shit. told me that this is an important book. You need to be reading it. And uh -huh. he knows about my past relationships and stuff. And that time I had a steady relationship. But every single time when I would speak to John, he would point out specific videos on YouTube on this red pill community. He was kind of putting these little seeds you know, into my conscious mind. That you need to look into this. You need to look into this because it's dro dropping this wisdom. And the more I learn about John and learn about what he's been going through the last couple of years, a lot of different experiences that he's had. And he actually put all, a lot of experiences in this book. I know he hasn't shared this book out to a lot of people at all. And I was fortunate to be one of those guys to just be able to read it. I read it through multiple times 
And every single time that I read it, I get something new out of it. That's the important thing. Now me, I'm very different than John. For example, I don't go out and party. I don't go to bars and stuff. I'm just a regular guy, regular guy, okay? But for me, I'm all about liability concerns. I'm about, there are a lot of roadblocks, a lot of pitfalls along the way on this life, on this journey that you're on. And if you're not aware that you're gonna get broadsided, just like if you're driving a car today, you're like, well, I don't feel like putting on my seatbelt, okay? I don't feel like getting my car insurance. I'm gonna fuck around on my phone, you know, while I'm driving. What eventually is gonna catch up to you? Well, this whole uh, community where John has been experiencing different experiences he's had with dating, relationships, well, there are a lot of pitfalls, a lot of setbacks, a lot of heartaches. Now, my personal story is that I started, fortunately, started out working early out of high school. And in my office, there were people in their 30s and 40s. That was kind of the quiet guy. I didn't know much about anything. I didn't have any relations at the time, just a teenager. But I will be listening to all the troubles that they've had in their marriage. You know, some people that are going through marriage, they're talking about divorce, they're having alimony problems, child custody. And these are all very foreign keywords to me at that time as a young teenager. But then in my 20s, I kind of just didn't even talked about this. I wasn't around it that much until I met John again in my 30s, where, wow, this is becoming more of a forefront because I, now I see in my 30s, uh, later on, a lot of my own friends, you know, they got divorced and now they're going through these battles, you know, on top of battles. And that compounds into their stress, you know, compounds into everything that they do. It's almost like they can't really even think very clearly, you know. So I always encourage and John, you know, there are a lot of things that we can do in life. And I come from the standpoint of, okay, instead of just selling things that would sell, you know, just for the sake of money, why don't we flip it on its head? What if I were to put out a product? I know it's going to benefit humanity. If humanity doesn't take this information serious, they're going to get fucked. That's the way I think about situations now. And information that John has put together in his book, I highly recommend for you to go through it. And not just once, you know, I have all these notes. I kid wow. you guys, not just from this book, but for all these different content, different content in addition to John's books, different to videos that he has uh, given me. Um, I kind of have to go through these on a pretty consistent basis because some people, you know, they read through these ebooks. You know, maybe you go through John's book, you just read through it once, but it's not ingrained. You see what I mean? A lot of people, they know information peripherally and it's not ingrained into their DNA, into their everyday decisions, you know? And I think a lot of people, they're just going through life kind of just half awake. And I think the way how John has put this thing together, he's very real. You know, he's telling you all the setback that he's had. So you don't have to go through them yourself. And that's the benefit for even somebody like me that's not always out there partying. You know, maybe someday down the line, I may want to get into a relationship. But prior to that, but what's the avenue you're going to go about doing that? You know, what are the pitfalls if you to use these online dating apps or if you go to this different website? So there is so much value from just going through what other people have gone through. You don't have to say, make the same mistake twice. And I think a lot of people, they keep on making the same mistakes on top of mistakes, going on detours, little necessarily need to go on. Once you're on one detour, it's so easy to put yourself on another detour and you're 10, 15 years down the line already, still fighting child custody battles, not between you and your ex-wife, but may, she may have other kids with other, you know, other guys you have to deal with. And if he's just coming in, fresh you know in your early 20s and you're thinking well she really loves me you're going to get bra sided that's just the facts just the facts so there are a couple of things i want to mention in john's book and i read through it today again and it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks because 
I've been making the same, I've been making this mistake recently. You know, one thing that John mentioned in his book is the importance of becoming like a lighthouse, okay? You have to stand firm in your core beliefs. You have to stand firm in what you do. And a lot of people, they're not standing firm. They don't have any North Star principles that they abide by, okay? They really don't have any, any principles. They don't have any routine. They have nothing. And, but I took it too serious because sometimes I try to chase people down. I do have great information I believe that can help a lot of people. And sometimes I try to force my way and try to get people to see things my way. And that's not the way to do it. And I think a lot of you watching John's video, he is just like the lighthouse, man. He's just like, I'm just standing firm, just shining, shining my light, you know, shining you guys information. If you guys want to know more, you know, just reach out to me. And for me, I changed my wallpaper today on my computer just to show a lighthouse to, to force me to recognize that that's what I need to be doing, you know, going forward. Instead of pushing information, I have to draw people in, you know, draw people into my way of thinking. Can so, you explain the lighthouse thing there? Because uh, people don't really know. Can you explain what I wrote in there that uh, the lighthouse versus the tugboat? Oh, the tugboat. Okay. You'll have a better, you, 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 you probably explain that better than me with the tugboat. Yeah. Okay, so like I, I put this thing in there called the lighthouse and the tugboat. So uh, like what he was mentioning, like, hey, hey don't talk quiet. Sorry, there's a dog right here. But uh, what I was mentioning is you want to be the lighthouse instead of the tugboat. Like a tugboat yeah. can only help one boat at a time. And mm -hmm. you got a lighthouse has to pull the person or the boat that's in trouble to safety. Whereas the yeah. lighthouse is, stands firm, it Light shines up. bright, and it does the guidance and can help multiple people at, instead of just one person. So you want to be the lighthouse versus the tugboat. And that's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do, like mm -hmm. shine and share this message, kind of like the light that's on the lighthouse. That's kind of like the messages that I'm uh, putting out there. I'm trying not to be a tugboat and just try to deal with one person at a time. And that's right. kind of why I make these videos together. So that way I can say it once and kind of put my plant my message there and then it reaches and helps um uh, multiple people and that's kind of like mm -hmm. what he was trying to say in the beginning so that's an important lesson that uh so i, I put a lot of lessons at the back of the of the book for like um mm -hmm. uh business advice life advice and like the top quotes that i like in my life i put it all in there too um i think he was telling me that he even printed this shit out and i was surprised like so i print read. stuff out i print stuff out and i have to highlight them you know so yeah. That, that's how I learn best. I think it's once it becomes real in front of you. And it's so important for me to turn my actions, my knowledge into some form of a KPI. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they have knowledge, but they, ha they don't have KPIs. They don't know K what to do. Was key it performance key perform indicators. Yep. Yeah, key so performance nice indicators. Like some people may have a goal as I'm going to the gym. Well, that's not a KPI. You have to say, mm -hmm. I'm doing X amount of push-ups, X amount of sit-ups mm -hmm. you know how much i'm going to run different things like that and with this whole thing when you read through john's book i think a lot of people they want to know it's like what was your motivation because you know there are a lot of books out there on this topic but something urged you to write this book what what was that kind of urging john for you to say hey i need to put this together uh kind of like uh well during the quarantine i wasn't really doing shit we were trapped at home so um I just decided, uh, and then Dan Bilzerian, if you guys don't know who he is, he's one of the guys I look up to. I like his lifestyle. And like, as soon as I get as, en enough money like that, you know, I'll be living a similar lifestyle. I'm already kind of living a similar lifestyle, but on a smaller scale and yeah. not as public about it. Um, but I am trying to share the stuff that I learned because like, it's better to learn this before you become rich, before you make these mistakes, like these basketball players and stuff that get in a relationship or get taken advantage of. I go, yeah, they're ballers young. They make money young. But the problem is yeah. they didn't get experience young as to like what these girls are doing. So they get taken advantage of and then they get divorce rape. They get mm -hmm. child, whatever you call the um, child support. Payments. Alimony. Yeah, like 200 grand a month for that girl. Uh, Brianna, what's that girl's name who, who got the um, basketball player to pay 200,000 a month in child support, man? Like she's she's become popular now and everyone's like, okay. dog 
Um, but yeah, like that's what I'm saying. If you can learn this stuff early before, especially if you're not successful yet and you're working on something and like you're going to become, because as we age, as guys age, the more our uh, value increases. Whereas with women, um, their value with age decreases. So ours yeah. increases. So even if you're young, don't be afraid. Like I know you want to get laid and stuff. Don't worry about that. Just focus on building your business. Whatever mm -hmm. work you're doing, I met a lot of guys through my videos that even though they're not doing a business, they're doing well because they got like a, a decent job and like they're making good money. Um, and like the problem is when in, in life, a lot of people's problem is that they either make money or they have time. Most mm -hmm. people don't have both. And like I've been able to make money and have time like my freedom, like, you know, like especially like, for example, a doctor, a doctor makes bank. Right. But right practically no freedom. at the hospital and can't enjoy his money. So nope. what's if you read the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss really explains uh, really well that even if you ain't making as much as a doctor, even if you're making half or whatever, but you have freedom to enjoy it and are making money 24 hours a day, then right. your life is much more richer. And he breaks it down by um, how much you're making per hour. Even when you're sleeping, it ends up actually mm -hmm. becoming more than a doctor when you break down like, the benefits of what you're receiving so like guys if you haven't read the four hour work week i suggest you read that so if you're yeah. not an entrepreneur that'll help you get uh uh familiar with it and get your mind changing and if you haven't read rich dad poor dad that's definitely a must professional bachelor is the book that changed my life i definitely recommend you buy that i mean read it um mm -hmm. and that's why i kind of called my book the professional bachelor 2.0 and the american uh the real american dream i, I got a couple titles i'm thinking like the professional bachelor right. 2.0 the real American dream, the the men's guide on how to not fuck up your life. Um, what are you going to do a split test on like the four hour work week, get that title just right. Yeah. Kind of like a, kind of like a split test when uh, Tim Ferriss did his split test for the four hour work week. But yeah, like, you know, I'm not interested. Like, like he was, John's been telling me and pushing me to go start putting shit out. And like, um, you know, I, I, I made a, another Instagram just for my, um, kind of like this persona who I am that you guys know um, because I kind of keep my other shit private and I s still have people find me somehow. I don't know. Cause like, I'm not very public about that, but they do find right. me and like, I wonder. So, and I, I kind of want to keep that side, my personal life kind of private and all my girls and stuff. Like she's with me right now. She just, she's so super chill and she's supposed mm -hmm. to be, She's in, she has her bikini and everything, but it's, we are supposed to go surfing, but it's super cold and foggy. So we came, stopped by, um, and got a coconut over here and she's scarfing down. Look at that shit. Look, <laughs> man, I can't even do that. I had a regular coconut, but anyways, like, um, what else, John, that, uh, you, what, what else did you find in my book that was really helpful for you that like, you think that guys should, um, uh, take a look at and what you recommend uh, from from some of the stuff that I shared. Well, I mean, you have so many of these quotes from men, you know, at the end of this book. Uh -huh. Every last one of them is important. Can you Avoid read a couple single of like women, favorite? Absolutely. Avoid single women with a bunch of kids at home. Okay. It seems like common sense, but it ain't so common. That's the thing, it's man. Not. It's not. And if you watch different channels where people are pouring out all their pains and struggles now, you know, now they are looking back and they made all these wrong moves on the chessboard and they're trapped. They're basically, you know, they're trapped. They're completely trapped. The person less interested in the relationship controls the relationship. And so always be prepared to walk away. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that is true in business and everything. I think yep. a lot of people, they have a lot of great business concepts and they've been practicing business for a long time. They've been very successful. But now when they go into the dating field, everything, because they're emotionally charged, you know, all those emotions starts to roll up, roll up. Man, so the, the <laughs> marriage is love. Love is blind. Therefore, marriage is an institution for the blind. Uh -huh. There are just so many, I, I was talking to John about tweets. I was like, you already have so much content for tweeting if you ever wanted to tweet all this out because you don't need to do any of it. You just have it all scheduled and people will provide or receive a lot of value. You know, you never truly know a woman until you meet her 
in divorce court. Ah, so true, man. And these young guys have no idea because most of them aren't married, but the older guys that are watching this, I know you know what I'm talking about. If you've gone yep. through divorce court, what happened with the girl that you fell in love with that you thought would never do this to you? How could she turn so evil and so heartless? You know? Yep. Like, and for, for a man, we want to set order. You know, we like to see that we can come through in times of trouble, right? And that's a huge leverage point that could be exploited, you know. And here's just another guy on her list of people. She's copying and pasting the same text message to 15, 20, 25 other guys. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that's the reality of things. And there are all these other things that you mentioned in the back of your book where common mistakes that people make with women lending money trying to please women yeah. getting involved with illegal immigrants <laughs> that need a green card to stay in the country so you need right. to google google marriage fraud because a lot of people they need to spend some time talking to divorce lawyers you know just spend that money talking to at least three of them and says hey i just wanted to make sure with you my situation right here what would you advise different things like that letting her move in with you paying her bills Playing the role, Captain Save a Ho. Now, I'm sure all men, we play this to a certain different degrees. Yeah. You know, um, we've been in the internet marketing business. I had VAs out in the Philippines, virtual assistants. Uh -huh. And even though I wasn't dating them, there's, if they have trouble, you know, with their pets, you know, maybe with their family members getting sick, you know, you have to be very strong. You have to set these boundaries from early start. You have to have the words in you before these situations come so yeah. instead of them you don't know what to do you're saying so what are you going to do you know just what john said in the last video so you're already prepared you know these situations are going to come mm -hmm. but you're not going to be like oh i don't know what to do it's almost like sales training right because these women they're well coached they're well trained and some of them they are doing a lot of stuff with only fans they are well coached in that whole industry. They know how to get men to pay attention to them. They know the right things to say. There are batteries and batteries of these quotes <laughs> that they can copy and paste so they can keep that OnlyFans retention. You don't think some of these ebooks are gonna get out to all these younger girls? You know, that's, that's the reality that we're playing with. Spending too much time chasing women instead of chasing your own goals and happiness, okay? Again, getting involved with single moms, I can't stress this enough. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't I mean, matter I'm, how many times John mentions this in the book, you need to have that down because a lot of people, they keep on making the same mistake over and yeah. over. Having sex without condoms. You know, when you're in the heat of the moment, she's saying, baby, it would just feel so much better, you know, if you just take it off. Well, if you want to pay 18 years of child support, go ahead, okay? Well, Tell I know me. I don't follow that all the time. Like <laughs> with these girls here, like. <laughs> okay, so there, there's just so much gold in here. And what I want to share, more importantly, this is about dating and banging, banging chicks. I saw John's transformation, you know, not just with the girls, you know, with this um, whole lifestyle. Because, you know, John, he's already reading a lot of books. He's on this entrepreneurial path. He's always learning and improving himself, putting himself in situations where he can be in touch with other people that are like-minded, doing business, doing great things with their lives. There was, when I first met John, he was kind of out of shape, okay? And now you can see that he's slimmed down over the years. You can see some of his photos back then. He changed his diet. Now, he's the one that told me, hey, he's now on a vegan diet. He's no longer eating animals. He closed his whole taco shop in, Mexico, uh, in, in, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So... He's made all these commitments. You see what I mean? It's like, you want to have a great lifestyle. You want to go bang chicks, but you got to see all the other stuff that he's yeah. done. Because a lot of people says, I'm going to go down to Mexico. I got some money. Yeah. And then all these girls going to pay attention to me. No, they're not. John, explain that. I want you to let people know it's not just about that. You're going down there. You are morbidly obese. You have body odor oozing out of you. You can't talk to nobody. These girls still have options. You see what I mean? They do. And if you lead with your wallet, that's all they're going to ever see you for. Like yeah. all these that come over like her, they yeah. don't care. They, they want to hang out with me. They want to spend time with me. They love like being with me and stuff. And 
You know, I don't lead with my wallet. They don't even know how much money I make, you know? Exactly. But they just know that I like to have fun and that's what they want to be a part of. And I teach them shit. Like her, mm -hmm. I bought and shit. Baby, ya compras de uh, libros para ti también, sí? Se negocios. And I'm trying to help them. I'm not just using these girls or whatever. Like these guys that come down that think that they're just going to like treat these girls bad and like get what they right. want out. Not give a fuck. They can feel that. And I think that's why these girls gravitate towards me because they can sense that like mm -hmm. I actually care. I ain't just trying yeah. to use sex. And like if I do go to the whorehouse, I ain't banging a girl that I don't have a connection with no matter how hot she is. You know, right. I would rather see a girl that's like less good looking, but with a better attitude and compensate and have a much better experience and build a, a friendship that, you know, is more important. Mm -hmm. The connection to me is more important. And like mm. I can forego the looks to have a much nicer girl you know mm, like yeah. it, it makes it so much worth it and their attitudes and how they treat you and you know like all the girls that are super pretty if like they just want to use their looks to get stuff from you and like it's hard to find the ones that are super nice and chill and like have things that you want like that's why i have like this rotation of like her she's part of like my four four or five main girls that always come over and i like mm -hmm. something different about each one that comes over because they each give me, they each fulfill a part of me that I want out of a girl. And I can't find everything in one girl that sure. I want, which is going to, that's like the life mission, I guess, to find that unicorn that everyone wants. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, I ain't going to, that's not going to be like, I ain't going to stop. I'm going to, like, that's what I enjoy. Like with her, she's super chill. She doesn't like to drink, but she does like smoke weed. She doesn't like to party. So I, I when I don't feel like doing all that shit, I, do, I can hang out with her. We go watch movies, go out and eat and stuff. And, yeah. like, you know, and she wakes up early and does her workouts and stuff. You know, she's different. She, I get that kind of part with her versus if I want to go party, I got the other girls that come over that just want to fucking drink and um, mm -hmm. smoke weed, go out. Yeah, they all like... They all, of course, they all like having sex too, you know, like that's a, they, they start young guys, like really. And then I see what they're doing, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He's actually the one that, uh, you know, they, they all have fucking boyfriends too. Like that's what I'm right. telling you guys. Like they all yeah. have boyfriends and yet they still go out with other guys. And the boyfriend has no idea what they're doing. Like her boyfriend yeah. doesn't part with me. Baby, tu novio sabe tu está conmigo ahora. Y por qué no? Uh, he doesn't want her to know. You know, I right. asked her. She said no. And I said, why doesn't he know? And she's all, I don't want him to know. You know, like that's what they're going to do. And you think, you, like, these guys that are married and guys that have girlfriends, this is what they're doing, man. Like, you don't want to be the sucker that they're like, yeah, maybe they love you for something, but then just like what I'm doing, where they get their needs fulfilled by other people, like, right. I'm doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. So just be careful. And I, I try to write that in my book and I try to share it on yeah. the video. Like I told John too, I'm like, dude, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make money off this shit and like yeah. beef or anything. I just want to share all the shit that I learned that I wish someone taught me, but he's all, dude, yeah. you got, so, you got so many people, you got so much traffic. He's all, the, the problem with every business is that there's no, there's the, the problem with business is that it's hard to generate traffic. Like you usually right. got to pick and I'm getting this traffic organically. I'm getting people even sending me money, sending me crypto. I don't even ask for it. You know, yeah. these, you already have all these people. You have people, a following of people that value your, he even told me like, shit, your videos are an hour long and people watch it to the end. You know? Yeah, was, I'm sure that I'm sure they are. I haven't looked at the analytics, but you are a great storyteller. Okay. And you are well polished in your speech. When you speak, people pay attention. You know, and there aren't that many people I find online I can do that with. There just aren't. So I know when if I can watch all the way to the end, it's because there's that much value in what John is talking yeah. about and the pacing that he's putting in. Quotes from men. We just want to go back to what he just said. Girls are never yours. It's uh, only your turn. Your turn. Uh. It's only your turn. So I know a lot of people, they are kind of getting mind blown. When they watch videos like this, maybe they're approaching this content for the first time. There's completely off their radar, but it's important for you to start to examine all your false beliefs. There's so many things that in your mind that are incorrect. And I just want to give you a very common example. I always tell people, we've been growing up, other people say that, 
oh, don't be scared like an ostrich sticking your hand, sticking your head in the sand. Okay, we keep on hearing that, keep on hearing, don't stick your head in the sand like an ostrich. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen an ostrich next to you three feet away? These guys, they don't give a fuck. They are not scared of you at all, okay? If you get attacked by one of these guys, they tell you you need to lay flat on the floor because if you get clawed by their talons, your entrails are going to come out. That's how sharp they are. They will fucking kill you. You know, they ain't scared of shit. So go look up some National Geographics. Start to dissect all your opinions about things. Research to see the veracity of that particular thing that you're currently holding on to. It may not be right. So in the, in the world of dating, <laughs> okay, there are a lot of things that we've been taught through Disney, through commercials, through all these things that inculcate a certain ideal, okay? And until you start to see the reality, see the facts, if you're in California, you think the marriage divorce rate is 50-50, it's 60-40, okay? If you're in California. Uh, 70, <laughs> you gotta, uh, near 70, I think. 70 <laughs> now. Yeah. I mean, and that's just the first divorce, right? So the second divorce, yeah. those numbers go even higher and higher, yeah. right? No, no, the first one is over 50 to 60, second is 70, 80% chance, third 80 and up that it's gonna happen again. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, why would guys wanna do that? Why do you wanna put yourself through that, man? Right, but it's just like the ostrich that's been sticking their head in the sand, thinking yeah. that they've been doing that, we've been taught with this the whole time, you know, go to school, go to college, you know, your education is going to take good care of you. Go find yourself a job. All these things, you know, it ain't working. So what other things in your life right now are not true? You know, so I, I always want people to examine it. it. That is one of the reasons why I print these things out. I print them out so I can look at myself in the mirror and really examine, okay, am I really following through with this, right? Am I... Do, do I have it installed um, as part of my being? So when these situations come, and they do come, and I can see it in my family members, I can see it in my friends. So reading through this book, maybe I'm not out there at the club like John. Maybe I don't have an extravagant lifestyle, whatever, whatever. But I need to start recognizing these things, even among my friends. Uh, just how are they being treated by their wives? You know, What's the attitude that they have when their husbands aren't around? You know, how do they speak about them in their private life? These things compound. So without them being around, I can see and sense the energy. And I think those are data points you need to start to, to pick up, not just for the other people, and pick it up with your own selves because the hardest thing for you to do is to pick it up for your own self because you're in it. So the more that you can see yourself outside, okay, really examine your own personal life. There was a time I looked in the mirror. I thought I had a six pack. I didn't have shit. You understand? I was that delusional. Yeah. I met John and he didn't have a success. And then like I watched him, dude. This guy got ripped. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. right now. This nigga is ripped. <laughs> yeah. But, and I made all the choices I had to make yeah. to do this fucking KPIs. So why do you think you on John's channel you're learning a lot about girls? What John's trying to get you to do is an overhaul in your own motherfucking personal development. John, what you said that be right. Yeah, like it's not just about girls. I've, I mentioned it in other videos. Like, if you want girls to be attracted to you, you gotta be the kind of person that both guys and girls are attracted to you. Not just sexually, but like your lifestyle, how you are. You know, yeah. like, you gotta be friendly and interesting. And like, that's why the it, it once you have that lifestyle where both guys and girls want to hang around with you, then the yeah. girls just naturally will come. Like, absolutely. Like, I have, I, right now i have too many girls hitting me up that want to hang out all the time and i can't even coordinate I, sometimes i have to hide because i'm so tired and yeah i gotta take turns like having them come over and sometimes i have all of them come over at one time man it's right. like too much management and i don't i don't really yeah. like dealing with all like how damn bilzerian has all those girls around man like it's hard so, like i like having just one at a time so i can focus on them and do what i want you know but Absolutely. sometimes like that party move where i want to have a lot of girls over but when i do it's it's a lot of babysitting, man. You got you're responsible for like taking care of them and like mm -hmm. making them have fun and everything. So you know, like 
I can see the lifestyle looks cool and stuff. And we were talking about this yesterday about like, mm -hmm. um, you know, John is like a complete opposite of me as far as like, he doesn't bang wars or whatever, doesn't party, doesn't smoke weed. It's like, but we do share that entrepreneurial connection and that mm -hmm. where we, I've asked him questions because he's like a Facebook marketing uh, fucking genius. And that's what he was doing. So like for my business and stuff, I would ask him stuff about Facebook marketing and he would give me advice and look through our ads and stuff and make corrections and do all that stuff for us. And like, we share this entrepreneurial bond. Whereas mm -hmm. like you, you gotta have the, um, like what Ty told us, like the level, the law of 33% where you yep. spend 30% of your time with people that are above you, above 30% yep. that are at your level, and then 33% with people that are like, not necessarily younger or whatever, but 33% with the, the people that don't really know as much. And mm -hmm. so that way, the things you learn from the top 33% are like things yep. that they're more advanced than you and you're learning from them things that you can uh, improve your life with. And then the, the 30% that you're with that is like your level they would be like your close friends and people that know you you know yeah. that you can have your fun and you can learn things from them like if you want to go out those are the guys you want to hang out with and then the 33 percent below you is the the where where you get to teach what you've learned from the top two tiers so like mm -hmm. i spend i try to like uh divide my time up because I learned that in that mentorship program is part of the things that we need to do and mm -hmm. sometimes yeah recently I've just been spending time with lower 33% because I don't even leave Mexico it's not like I can meet a lot, bunch of ballers down in Mexico you know right. live. I'm just hanging out with girls all the time so I'm down with the lower 33% and so when I'm during that time I still learn from them you know like some of the stuff that I'm teaching you all the stuff like the secrets that they don't tell anybody like I'm trying sharing that with you and you hear it straight from their mouth like her just yeah. telling you what I just asked like she ain't lying about it she has nothing to hide like she's just being truthful of what they're doing because no one, mm -hmm. no one fucking knows so that's what I'm trying to share with you guys and I I still learn even though they're, they're the lower 33 percent but I'm still mm -hmm. trying to teach them and help improve their life and like I don't Absolutely. get nothing out of you girls I don't get nothing out of helping you guys I don't get like I don't really need anything back in my life because my life has just been so good I've been so blessed you know like I don't really got to work I got money coming in every month even if I work or not you know I build my life to where I may not be a millionaire but I kind of can live that lifestyle of freedom mm -hmm. like the four hour work week teaches you because you make money while you're sleeping and that's yeah. the secret like if you want to have true freedom you need to have something passive income residual something coming in where you don't got to work for it you know like that's that's what I'm trying to share with you guys especially like if you're working a job and you hate it and mm -hmm. like what John was doing I saw it yeah. he was fucking yeah. stressed he was depressed, you know, yeah. he was out of shape. He was like dating a girl. And I told him, man, why are you dating this? He, he was dating like some hot chick in the Philippines. I'm like, bro, what are you doing dating this girl? Like long distance does not work. I, I talk about this yeah. relationship in my book, how it doesn't work. And he didn't believe me. But what happened after I told you a couple months yeah. or whatever? What, you know, like the relationship was done. You know, yeah. so I told yeah. him, try to share yeah. all this stuff. And I'm so grateful, you know, because um, when you're in it, and so going forward, I best believe I'll be going through the book multiple times again. That's, that's the thing. And also reinforcing it on a consistent basis. Just uh, one thing that stood out for me was that you want girls to respect you. Okay. But you got to have something to respect. Yeah, exactly. And to do that, you have to first respect yourself. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they don't have that health in place, right? It's really yeah. hard to respect yourself when you look in the mirror, when you haven't taken those steps to improve your own personal health. If you don't have that foundation, it's really tough for you to go and make a lot of money because you don't have the energy to make that extra call, okay? Wait, wait, right when you said that, like there's a saying, yeah. like do one thing is how you do everything. So yeah. like you don't take care of your health, you ain't gonna take care of your finances. You ain't gonna take care of the person you love. You ain't gonna take care of nothing because the health is the most important thing in your life. And if you can't even take care of your, your most important thing in your life, you can't love yourself. How are you gonna love right. someone? How are you gonna take care of anyone else if you can't even take care of your own shit? If your finances are fucked up, if your health mm -hmm. is fucked up, you know, like you ain't gonna get the love. Like what Ty taught us is health, wealth, love, and happiness in yeah. that order. It has to in be that done order. in that order. Because if yeah. you have, and you don't have, uh, if you don't take care of your health, but you have lots of money, you have lots of love, mm -hmm. none of that matters. You know, none if you have love, 
have health, you don't have wealth. What good is that love? And love ain't gonna exactly. Pay. And love mm-hmm. ain't gonna take care of your fucking if you're sick in the uh, hospital. Oh but like, hell no. Take care of health first, then you take care of your finances, and then the love comes after. Love isn't just like romance or whatever. It can be love from your friends, love from your family, love from your 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 pets, whatever it may be. Sure. But that that it's all in that one thing. Yeah, and in that order, then you you'll achieve like true happiness when you have in that priority. If you can yeah. master all, take care of all three of those parts in your life, then you've solved pretty much the puzzle, you know, mm-hmm. and then start to like, for me, I've seen it unfold before my eyes. Like i this is the best my life has ever been. Like my life just keeps getting better, 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 better. And it's because yeah. of the things that I've learned. Like people, like people don't know, like I paid 25 grand to be mentored by Ty. Like we would go to his house every month, couple, couple, couple days per month. And he would take us out and bring in all these entrepreneurs to teach us that were top entrepreneurs from all these different niches. And he's yeah. all, I don't want this to be the Ty show. You know, he's, I want you to learn so, so you'd be well-rounded and like learn from yeah. all these different things. And like, yeah. uh, he would have us just like reading a book. He would say, you don't have to read the entire fucking book. Just take a few nuggets. That's going to give you an idea. That's going to change your life or help you Absolutely. on your business or whatever. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with you guys is like share all these different things, not just about growth. That's every guy pretty much wants to bang girls, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like in order to do that, you got to get the rest of the shit, right. You know, unless you just want to make money. Like I see these, these fat guys that are balling, throwing away money in the club. And yeah. it's like, yeah. the girls are only there because of the money. They don't want to hang out with them. They ain't physically right. attracted to him. And he's right. leading with the money, tossing it all around. He's getting the attention he never got before just for money. He doesn't know mm-hmm. how to bring attention to himself by being someone that people want to be around with. So if you lead with money, right. that's all they're going to care about. You know, if you lead yeah. with these girls with money, that's all they're going to use you for. If you lead with yeah. something else, then they're going to like appreciate you and actually care about you and want to be mm-hmm. with you, you know, then. I love that, John. I love that because that's what we wanted to draw out out of this conversation because I, I don't think a lot of people understand the <laughs> sacrifices that you have to make to get your health in order, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people around our age group in our 40s may not in shape. So if you start yeah. out young, okay, if you yeah. start out young, it says, I see a lot of liability concerns ahead of me. What I mean by that is I take an inventory of my own family members. What's my parents' health like? What are my uncle's health like? What are yeah. some reoccurring chronic diseases they're experiencing? That's most likely going to happen to you, man. Yeah. If you don't oh. think about that right now, yeah. when you are young and start making the lifestyle choices, okay, mm-hmm. the, the nutrition choices, right? Yeah. I used to eat three times a day. For what the fuck? Right now, I'm only eating two, two times a day. Yeah, I used too. to think that every single day I had to eat meat. No, I only eat maybe yeah. once or twice a week. But John has gone all the way down to vegan. And you can see him. He's thriving, you know, before he had, you know, pretty Bro, solid. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, seriously, like when you met, I was going to the club every day. Like when the quarantine hit, the quarantine like actually saved my life because I was going to the strip mm-hmm. club the house every day, drinking a bottle of Grey Goose every fucking day, eating pizza, tacos and everything. I gained like 30 fucking pounds. Like I was disgusted in yeah. what I became. And it's because I just got too consumed in that lifestyle of banging mm-hmm. chicks, partying every night. It ain't healthy. And then when the right. quarantine hit, it forced me to stay home. It forced me mm-hmm. to be productive. It forced me to look at other things in my life. And like, since you can't go out, like right. I had to uh, do stuff at home. And that's when I started writing the book. That's when I became full out trying to go 100% vegan, even though I, I, I may eat cheese once in a while on a pizza or something, mm-hmm. but I ain't eating meat. I ain't eating fish. I ain't eating pork or nothing like that. And then I mm-hmm. lost like, like I made a video one time of like the top 10 tips for being productive, working from home. And mm-hmm. that was like one of the first videos I put out and I shared it with John. He's like, bro, you lost so much fucking weight. You, know, you did. And I didn't even know <laughs> like- until he pointed it out to me, you yeah. know? So. And that, that's the great thing. I mean, I, I started on this weight loss journey of myself too. And yeah, kind of just keeping quiet about it until people start to notice because you uh-huh. don't really notice it yourself. Yeah, but you if don't. you're in it consistently, 18 months in, somebody's going to come up to you and they'll be like, John, what, what the hell happened to you? Are you okay? <laughs> you know, I seen that it seems like you lost a lot of weight, you know, and yeah. it's only a three month transformation too. the quarantine, like just three wow. months off. Was fucking not drinking not eating out because I, I couldn't go out 
So right. like the, the, when the, the quarantine thing was really in full effect where nobody knew how bad this thing was and everyone was like staying home, like we were forced, there's curfews, there was fucking, everything was closed. Like, so I had to eat at home. So all I ate was like salads and I fucking worked out every morning and like yeah. I lost weight super fast. Like I've never seen any kind of transformation like that. And like- And that's you kept it off. Day. You see what yeah, I mean? A lot I of people, they, they, they revert. A lot of people, oh, now everything is wide open again. Now they go oh. back and making those poor choices like they yeah. were before. You I, know, mean, I see a lot of men, they, 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 they bounce back. I with friends and got fucked up and drank. And I, did, I ate a quesadilla after some pizza. I regret, I'm like, fuck, I'm getting back into that habit. I don't want to get back in that habit. You know, right. I prefer like, I don't even like going to the club. Like I used to go every day and mm -hmm. everyone knows over there, but now that I met all these girls, they ain't working girls. They're just normal girls. They like coming over and hanging out. I get to achieve the same thing. I actually like give the club experience, the club vibe at my house. Like I turn up the fucking music they like to play. I got weed, I got the alcohol, I got food. Yeah. You oh, know, like I got the beach in front. So it's like going on vacation. I like, it's like my, my life is a vacation every day, the way I've set it up. It's kind of like what Dan was there in his book called The Setup. Like you gotta set up your life to where the girls wanna come to you. Like you gotta position yourself and set it up so that right. way like you're attracting these things and look how in look how in shape he is like that's kind of like you gotta you gotta have some kind of someone to look up to and kind of like mo so you can have goals and model your life like after how they do it like i don't share mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that i do but john's seen me like from behind the scene and like knows me and i share a lot of this that i do and he's like applied it to his life he saw actually he's almost got like personal like coaching and shit from me that i don't really share like a lot of guys hit me up and i try to share as much information as i can like when you guys email right. me. but these guys that are my friends like i really try to help them out and offer them good advice and john's one of the very few when i do give advice he actually fucking takes action on it there's a lot of friends that see my lifestyle and they ask me about it and i give them the advice and like they don't do shit about it but yet they keep complaining right. that life sucks you know and yeah. i'm like dude ain't doing shit so like i ain't gonna be motivated to keep helping you if i keep telling you so i'm just wasting my breath if, you know, uh, you know, I offered all this information that can help your life, but you ain't do nothing about it, you know, mm -hmm. but like, that's why I appreciate when uh, guys like John come into my life and it's like, they really value the lessons and they actually like, dude, this guy printed out the shit, like the, the important shit. lessons that I wrote in that book, he printed it out so he can fucking look at it every morning. And like he said, it was like his positive affirmations every day. And he, he, he watched the vision board fucking thing and made his own vision board. You know, he did pretty much all the lessons that I'm trying to teach. And look, like, like this guy, like, you, you can't tell with that suit on, but you see this guy without his fucking shirt on, fucking ripped, man. I'm like looking at, up to him to get ripped now, man. You know, like, Bro, I, like, I got that. you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. So he's helping me now. Yeah. He's, all, he's motivating me, you know, because I still like when these girls come over, they're coming over every day and I'm drinking with them. You know, I, I, I ain't yeah. trying to like all the hard liquor and stuff like I was before and all the juices. So like I bought these like fucking, white claws and trulies because they're like super light and it's like alcohol I can yeah. still like with them and the girls like it they get fucked up because it's stronger than the beers and stuff and because mm -hmm. they like beers and like sometimes they like tequila and i'll drink a little bit of that but you know um, i'm not trying to drink like I'm, I'm trying to learn from the past mistakes that i made that got me into the fat or bad position like when i got fat that's right. like a bad and like i saw the fucking pictures my belly was fucking hanging over my 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 uh my pants like it seemed yeah. like some of the girls took pictures of me from above they saw me in the club they're like hey i see you and they, they took a picture of me from above in the in the club and i was sitting downstairs and i was yeah. like damn who is this guy I, I couldn't even recognize it was me because it was disgusting because you don't look at yourself like that in the mirror you don't notice it you know like right. you see your face so you don't notice a change but then like looking at like a photo or a video or whatever i was disgusted and like my face was fucking round and mm -hmm disgusting part was the roll like leaning yeah. off my fucking pants and like when you sit down all the shit just fucking uh yeah. sags you know yeah. so like yeah. i feel good right now i could run miles i can fucking surf for hours i can fuck for hours that's know? right I do like all the stuff you know i'm like getting older but yet i'm looking younger as the yeah. years go by like it's just everything is trans transformed. My finances are growing every month. You know, it's like mm -hmm. uh, I'm having more experiences. I'm meeting more people. Like the people I've met from my videos. It's just, man, I, a lot of people message me off Yelp and stuff. And like I right. notice a difference in 
people I meet off Yelp versus the people I meet off of uh, yeah. like the videos I do. Like and a lot of the guys, yep. yeah, especially you guys that are watching, like especially you've talked to me, like you know who you are. Like mm-hmm. I've met a bunch of young baller guys that are doing well for themselves that they value this information because ain't nobody sharing this time. They, they want to know how to do it and they don't really know anybody else who is doing it. You know, so mm-hmm. they travel by themselves and they got to learn the hard way. And that's why, like, I've done this all by myself for a long time. And I'm trying to, to pass off, like, give you guys a shortcut to, like, go straight mm-hmm. to the top, you know. That's Instead right. of taking the, the zigzags, I want you to just go straight to the top with all these things that I share. And, like, and that's why I put it in the book. Like, Dan Bilzerian motivated me to write a book because during the quarantine, he started writing his book. And so I even wrote that in the mm-hmm. book, some motivation as to why I did it. I share some of the secrets on how I met my girls and, like, uh the 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 stuff to look out for when girl i've talked about some of the the scams that girls pull the book talks about the the scams and all the other shit the red flags to look out for with women Mm -hmm. how to improve your life you know like how to improve your business and like your health and everything and some of the adventures i've been on you know pictures i gotta change it because i can't really show the the, the pictures that he saw in my book yeah like (laughs) the faces it shows the girls like i can't really when i publish or sell this or right distributed i can't have like all these girls faces and stuff because it's like so yeah the, the book is extremely valuable even without the photos you know uh-huh. i i want people to look at the content that they're learning from you uh-huh. and really look at themselves it's like i see this is where i am right now and this uh-huh. is where john's at you know how do i bridge this gap i'm not going to get there tomorrow but i gotta right. have a plan in place i gotta get my health in order I got to get my finances in the water, okay? I got to connect with influential people that are doing great things with their lives, you know, getting that building that network going and continually building this up, building this up, building this up. And whatever you have right now, you may seem insignificant. Maybe that breakthrough that you've had, you need to share that out. The more you can communicate your ideas with the world, the more powerful and more influential and great for the world because you found something that worked for you. Maybe it, even like a small breakthrough. You should need to be sharing that out there. And in certain pieces of information, if you're thinking nobody knows about this, humanity is really fucked if we don't learn this. You're the one that needs to be sharing it. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. I've tried. <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's, what John, that's what John is doing. And that's what I've been endeavoring to do, you know, regarding to weight loss. Because it's something that I've had some success in but i also keep it very humble because i know yeah hey he is different seasons that you go through you may need a different protocol i'm just sharing yeah. with you what has worked for me thus far you know maybe 18 months from now i may have another breakthrough and it's something that i could share you know with the world yeah. so of course my information is really off the off the charts if it's okay john just share very quickly what it is all about yeah, his stuff is more about like uh, health and losing weight uh, mm-hmm. cleanly, you know, so because he's done it. Like when he says he's humble, like right now, this nigga should be wearing his, with his shirt off on this fuck, <laughs> you know, but look at him, he's all dressed up. He's fucking one of those guys that, you know, we're complete. All, I wear I wear sweaters and the same fucking dry fit shirts every day. This guy yeah. actually dresses up, even if he has no one to impress, he fucking dresses up. That's what I've noticed about this guy. He's always fucking, you know, takes care of his appearance and shit where me we're like that's why we're like kind of like opposites you know of what we do mm-hmm. in life but yet we share these bonds and stuff because of the the interests that we have of uh business and like the philosophies in life to improve your life we both have that that drive to want to become better you can never exactly. like can't stop you know and yeah. like i got a lot of comments from guys telling me that well, that's one thing they like about my videos is that I'm trying to show off that I'm humble and I just keep it real. And I ain't like trying to like clickbait anybody or mm-hmm. trick them into buying something or anything like that. But like, that's why I'm kind of like, I don't really want to put my book out there. I did. I just wrote it to gather all my thoughts and like mm-hmm. my life experiences. And I kept it for myself, you know, and like he keeps pushing me to put it out there. He's all, bro, you got so many people that are like, watching your shit that would probably want more and yeah. like, he's telling me to like link my book in the in the videos and promote it on twitter and like really mm-hmm. start treating it like something real 
you know, and I'm right. still torn whether I want to do that or not, but he keeps pushing me and he's given me a lot of ideas and, you know, and how to kind of keep my life a little private still, but yet be able to share the information that I'm trying to share with you guys. That yeah. you, find, you know, it is important because for example, for example, I help people with weight loss, right? And some people say, well, John, I know a lot of people out there, they're already doing it, right? Mm-hmm. And I could be like, oh, I guess you're right. But at the same time, you know, I think I'm also doing the world a service because nobody has a sword that I have, okay? And it's important for me to reinforce. Just like you can't have one concept and you just say it one time in the book, you're going to likely miss it. So you have to reinforce it time and time again from different people. Now, you can go to coach Craig Adams, you know, there's also Rich Cooper, you know, they have their YouTube mm-hmm. videos, yeah. but there's nobody that has your story. Nobody has your own particular timeline, you know, and that in itself is very, very valuable. So I just encourage people, whatever thing that they're going through, maybe it's a health breakthrough that they've had, go out and share it. Maybe a relationship breakthrough that they've had, go out and share it. Maybe a financial breakthrough that it had, you know, that is found to be very successful. Go out and share it. The more you share it out there, it's kind of like what John spoke about in his book. You're kind of like that lighthouse. You're shining and you're going to draw the right people too. I think what John, his intention for making this video is to draw the right people. He's not looking for people off of Yelp. They're just kind of like want the lazy way. You know what I mean? Like what John's looking for is like he wants high performers on this channel. That guys that do great things, you know, yeah. that actually take action. Like, cause a lot of like, that's the difference that I noticed from the guys that messaged me off Yelp versus the guys that messaged me off the video that go to Costa Rica is that the guys that go to Costa Rica versus the guys that go to Tijuana are a completely mm-hmm. different breed of guys. Like they're successful. Mm-hmm. They're fucking making money. They don't mind like spoiling themselves. They know how to be disciplined enough to be the person that's successful and like they're asking me legit questions about like stuff that'll help them on that journey towards there whereas the guys that message me off yelp are asking me like questions about how to bank girls for cheap and you know like free advice or just offering me a drink like for my time like dude i don't need a drink i don't need like i don't want it and then like i'm trying to be a dick to any of you guys out there that try to ask me questions and stuff and the thing that annoys me the most and like uh when people ask me questions that they watch the video and i covered the information in the video and they they go and ask me the same questions that where i answered it and it's like dude did you not pay attention like right i I try to be nice and still answer and then like some guys will still ask another question that was answered in the the next question is the question that was answered in the video so it's like guys come on man like that's the whole reason i put the video together so i don't have to like repeat myself it's like you're wasting my time and like you know i don't like the guys that want to go hang out with me and stuff and just want to buy me a beer or, or, or what. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate that. But like, man, I hardly have time to hang out with the girls that I need to hang out with that I want to hang out with. Like, and it's mm-hmm. like, I, I've got to decide what, you know, like, am I going to decide to go have a beer with some guy I never met, you know, with no, with no avatar on the fucking, uh, no photo, no nothing, no, I don't know who the fuck you guys are sometimes, you know, like everything there, there's nothing, but yet you're asking me to do all these things. And like, right. some guys are asking me to hook them up with girls. Like, Hey, who's that girl you're with? Like, Hey, can you pass me her Instagram? I'm like, why the fuck? What the, like I passed the Instagram <laughs> and the contact information to, I don't even know who you, what you look like. There's a picture on your fucking YouTube avatar. There's no picture on your fucking uh, your Yelp thing. And that's what I mean. Like guys, you can't like, like when you're, you're, you're being like that, there's a reason why like you probably haven't achieved the success yet is because like you're trying to take shortcuts and do things mm-hmm. the wrong way versus like doing what we, we just talked about. And right. like if you want someone, not just me, but like if you try to reach out to like, let's say Michael Jordan teach you how to play basketball, he probably gets these right. kind of messages all the time. Why would he want to teach you or spend time with you if you are a guy who has no avatar, no nothing, no, right. what can you offer in return? Because their time is valuable. You know, he wants right. to go do other shit. He doesn't want to go coach someone who he's going to coach and doesn't really take action in what he's trying to coach you. That's kind of like what happens, you know, like when mm-hmm. you guys ask questions that are covered in the video, it's like, 
how can you how can I coach you if you're not even paying attention to the first part, you know, where I was already covered. So, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick or any. I don't want to be and I'm always nice to everybody. You know, I try to stay humble and I try to help. But like, guys, you got to like help yourself pay more closer attention, like put stuff into action. Like those are the guys I want to help. Like uh, right. I had a guy I'm going to do an interview like this with. He used to work at Office Depot and okay. like he came up to me and mm -hmm. <laughs> he recited my shit word for word all the fucking advice i gave i was like impressed and i was like dude this nigga came down and yeah. like he knows my shit better than i do I'll, I'll, it made me fucking laugh and like how many guys come up to me where you know they cause a scene and they're like dude you're a fucking legend like this causing the scene all drunk and stuff like yeah i don't want to hang out that doesn't like it's like when a celebrity says oh my god it's you can i have a selfie now i understand kind of like how that 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 kind of feels in a way and mm -hmm. like you got to stand out from these type of people that are coming up. It's no different from when a guy goes up to a girl and says, oh, you're so pretty. You know, like what's a girl going to, they hear that every day. You got to position yourself differently to where it catches their attention and right. like, they're, they're intrigued or something like that. So, you know, that's how you get to the, like if you're poor and how do you get into a circle of that are like successful, you got to show that you're fucking determined. You got to show yeah. that you're willing to fucking put in the work. You got to show that you value the, the advice that's being given by actually taking action on what mm -hmm. advice or fucking lessons they tried to teach you. The more they're going to mm -hmm. want to teach you and not expect anything in return. Anybody who wants to have a mentor, that mentor has to see like they're not wasting their time, you know, like right. that, uh, the shit, like what John does, like he, like I get a kick out of the shit that he fucking tells me about the stuff that he's actually listened. Like some of the stuff, like even the stuff that he just started talking about in the book, cause I haven't read it in a while. You know, it brought up a lot of memories and stuff like all these lessons. And it gave me ideas on things that I can do. He told me I have like a whole fucking thing that I could just tweet about. I have content for days on that. I could tweet, which I don't even think about, yeah. you know, there, there, there really is. And what John is just really trying to drive home. The lesson is you got to work on yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be very, very accurate, discerning with your current situation right now, okay? You need to get on that scale and put down that weight number. Then you're going to measure your height. And from these two numbers, you're going to calculate your BMI, your body mass index. From there, you're going to determine if you're in a healthy state or in a very, very unhealthy state. From there, mm -hmm. you got to be very objective about, all right, I don't like where I am right now. But I need to start course correcting this because it's all on me. No, there are no shortcuts to anything that you want to achieve. And now this is kind of like what John's trying to pull, pull it out there, make this video one time. And I, he hopes that a lot of you will go through this video multiple times. And I'm not the smartest guy. I can tell y'all, like when I was younger, I got held back twice before I was 10. Okay. So I have to do this. I have to <laughs> print these things he learned. He didn't and learn. Think that's a bad thing. He learned shit on what to do to fix that problem. That's right. And I'm glad, and, and I'm just so wondering, and I've been on different courses before where I see the frustration that other coaches have had with other students. The coach already told you what to do. Yeah. He already laid it out step by step. And then they keep on asking the same question over and over on these Zoom calls. And I'm just like, I need to get out of the Zoom call and just yeah. execute because there's yeah. nothing more to talk about because he already said it all. It's either you're going to go and do this right now with the step that he told you to do. He already made it. Also, you click here, okay? Then you click over here. He's doing screen recordings. If you're not even willing to do that, he already got templates for the whole sales letter that you should put together. Or you got to just change a couple of things, knock it out put it in, change it to the words that you, that you want to use. If you're not doing that, of course, you're not going to have a digital product. Nothing's going to happen. And you're just going to be wondering, you know, when am I going to do this? I'm going to choose the right niche. You know, you're so stuck on. So one of the quotes that he had is, you know, done is better than perfection. I think that's one of the done. quotes he had. I'm done beats perfect every time. Every that's time. what Salatin, the mentor of Joel Ty, taught Ty, right. Ty repeats this all the fucking time. And I met Joel Salatin and I talked to him and I love that quote that he's, I tell that to everybody, especially like to people that are trying to do shit. Like, yeah. 
Gun beats perfect every time. Like even if the product's not perfect or you're trying to make a video, just fucking put it out there. Because if you wait till it's perfect, we'll never fucking do it. That's why he always says done beats perfect every time. Do it. Mm -hmm. Just get it done. Even if the product isn't what you expect or it's not 100%, even if it's like 70%, just fucking put it out there. You know? That's right. Like the video that I like I just put it out there. It ain't no editing. I just fucking record it. I video. I got an assistant who could do all the video editing and stuff. But fuck it. I just yeah. put out the content. I just fucking talk and I share what I know. And like, I can't believe how much traction it's getting. Like mm -hmm. the guys that are watching it and like, I just talk. Like I don't even know how long we've been talking right now. Like it just goes on and like the people right. are actually intrigued and they sit there and watch. Like fuck that scam video was an hour hour and 50, over an hour and 15 minutes and yeah everybody's fucking watching the entire fucking thing and message yeah. and writing comments and stuff and like the costa rica video was only supposed to be a 10 15 minute video turned mm -hmm. into 45 fucking minutes you know yeah. and I, that's where i'm getting a lot of guys messaging me from you know and i'm just sharing shit doing the stuff i love you know like yeah. that's you guys are seeing the result of the shit that you don't see from behind the scenes that we do to be able mm -hmm. to enjoy that stuff. You see right. the end product, which attracts you That's guys. That's right. That's but right. A lot of people ask me, well, what do you do, man? How you? How did you retire early and this and that? I have, so I made a video on how, how I did it. And like mm -hmm. I, I've even put together a course for that. I don't share that. The course is only for guys that I work with to teach them how to um, do the credit card shit. And like, mm -hmm. like I share it with them, but they don't even fucking want to do the work. They don't want to watch. Right. They don't want like, they don't want to learn, you know? Like, if you can't even watch a couple videos, how do you expect to be successful? Right. How would you define masculine excellence? I think with this conversation we've been talking about, most of your audience, they're guys, young guys, middle age, uh -huh. whatever. How would you have this conversation with a young guy? It's like, how would you define masculine excellence for them and how they should chart and course their life? Well, the, 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 the plan to follow is the four pillars of uh, wealth. The, that Ty taught us, health, wealth, love, and happiness. If you base mm -hmm. your love, I mean, your life in that particular order, prioritize in that order, health first, then your wealth, yeah. then love, then happiness comes after it. And that's what I've mm -hmm. followed. And it's been helping. Like, if I didn't go through Ty's program, like, my life wouldn't be like this. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be making these videos. I wouldn't be living in Mexico, you know? Like, I wouldn't have met right. all these last entrepreneurs. I wouldn't have met John from, because, like, I wouldn't that's have right. met that's true. You know, that's I wouldn't have met the other guy who I told you guys a story about who met the Colombian girl who's getting taken advantage of. I wouldn't have done a lot of these things. And like people think if you don't make an effort to put yourself in these type of positions, your life ain't going to change. Like my that's parents, right. like when I told them I paid 25 grand to um, like both my parents are nurses, so they don't understand like entrepreneurial shit that I'm right. like kind of black sheep of the family. My sister's a lawyer. My other sister's a teacher. I was supposed to be mm. a nurse, too, but I fucking right. left. I left from nursing school an hour early for lunch. I didn't tell anybody. I got kicked out. Fucking best thing that ever fucking happened to me. And That's like, right. Steve, like, they're all, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I don't know, but it ain't going to be nursing. You know, right. and I told them because I went into nursing because they said, oh, you could work three days a week and have four days off in a row and just go surf and travel, do whatever you want. I said, okay, that's, that's what sold me on it. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. And then when I found mm -hmm. out about residual and all that shit, I told them, I said, well, why, why can't I have seven days off instead of four days off? And they're all, that's impossible. Wow. There's no such thing. You know, to them, they couldn't comp comprehend it. And that's what I'm like, there's got to be a way. I've seen other guys like mm -hmm. talk about residual and they're all, that's a scam. Everything like to, to people are scam. Like to, to normal working people that don't really um, take risks, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. everything sounds too good to be true or a scam. I even have guys like message me about the credit card thing saying it's a scam. All right. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking scam. It's fucking treating my life good. It's giving me freedom to do what I want. You know, it doesn't seem like a scam to me. I work for Visa, MasterCard, all the big credit card companies, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I get a piece of it. Like, yeah, it's a scam to people that don't understand it. But right. like, man, when you, when you put yourself in these positions, my parents got fucking mad at me when I dumped 25 grand to tie all, who the fuck is this guy? The only guy getting is this guy you paid 25,000 to. And they just couldn't believe it. Like my mom right. kind of, good at she's all it's his money let him do what he wants but my dad is more like you know traditional and uh you know they think everything's a scam and like right. it was the best 25 grand i ever fucking spent like i don't know why they had such a problem with it when you know 25 grand is cheaper than college tuition any course in it college 
costs you 50 grand and you don't get it. You're not guaranteed to make money. You're not, they don't teach you how to make money. I just paid 25 grand to a millionaire to learn from all his friends and meet his friends, meet other guys that are interested, like, like me that want to do improve their life and like mm -hmm. live a type of lifestyle. And look at these kind of people I met, like John, I met Scott I yeah. met other guy in the Thai program. I met so many cool, some, some top entrepreneurs that I'm friends with now that, you know, I don't even share on my social medias or nothing, you know, like my social media is just me having fun, going surfing, the girls, my girlfriend, stuff like that. And that's why I try not to share. I don't, I don't give it out, but I'm, I'm making a new one just for, you know, for the guys out there that kind of want, I'll share with stuff that my lifestyle that I don't really share on my um, personal Instagram, that shit that you guys like, that you want to see, you know, like the girls mm -hmm. out with the places I'm going, you know, advice things like that that you know like my friends and family ain't looking at yeah they know my lifestyle but it's right. not like I rub it in their face you know because i know right. my parents are ashamed sometimes of like the shit that i do and like they tell like when i smoke weed and i'm posting with these girls and so mm -hmm. they're like, Man, what are you doing that like you have a reputation i tell them like i don't think my, my people know you know? like but yeah. you, know, you got to understand from their position they're traditional and i'm not like like right. i said i'm like sheep of the family both my sisters work jobs and to my parents to my parents my sisters mm -hmm. are more successful than me because they have a they have a stable job and that's what every uh, go for a third world country they mm -hmm. stability is like success you know they don't right. want to work. whereas a guy like that you know, has to work for himself that's not stability like yeah i get right. residual and like i get every day off if i want to but to them it's like i'm a bum you know <laughs> uh, they look at me like i'm a bum they feel like i take them to the casino on the weekdays and stuff and right. like i love it you know, I give them money to gamble and like uh, play and just throw away money, you know, like they mm -hmm. uh, it makes me feel happy, you know, like because I throw mm -hmm. away a lot of money, just wasting it on girls, wasting it on trips and stuff. So I try to like spoil my nieces and my 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 um, parents. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't Man. know. Like, I just want to share. I want to just uh Sure, my little Ty Lopez story because Ty definitely changed my life as well in a in a major way. Wait, before you say that, like yeah. a lot of the, a lot of haters on Ty out there saying he's a fucking scam and all that shit. Whatever you think, they say the same thing about Dan Bilzerian. No matter yeah. what you guys think, these guys are doing stuff and people look up to them. And like when people found out I paid the twenty five grand for thinking it's a scam, like it's not. Like I I know the guy personally. He's fucking legit. Right super fucking smart i learned Jeez. a lot of shit him you know like you want to put yourself in a room where you're the fucking dumbest person in the room that way you elevate yourself to well uh, you force yourself to elevate yourself to the guys level that are in the room with you so if you're the smartest mm -hmm. person you're in the wrong room get the fuck out of there absolutely you know? so go ahead and so, tell your story about uh i'm sorry like i just wanted to say that because all these people that always no, it's important it's important people need to know so this is the very first time i ever share the story it is a true story 2015, I went to one of his conferences. It was at the Roosevelt Hotel, Los uh -huh. Angeles. Prior to this conference, he posted on his Instagram of a quote from Alexander the Great. For whatever reason, I memorized that quote. I fucking memorized it, okay? And in the conference, he asked, did anybody memorize that quote? I'm gonna quote it right now. Through every generation of the human race, there's been a constant war, a war with fear. Those with the courage to conquer it are made free. Those who are conquered by it are made to suffer until they have the courage to defeat it, or death takes them. Alexander the Great. When Ty heard me quote this, he told me to go to the VIP dinner with him for oh, free. Yeah. Dude, I was there okay? at that time. Yeah, oh my. So at that table, I sat with Brian Rose, London Real. He was uh -huh. at my table. All right. At that table, Ryan Daniel Moran, capitalism.com. All these superstars already by 2015, they're already superstars in their own right. Joe Salzen over there by that corner, you know, with that yeah. another table. So that was like Ty Lopez story, man. He just called me. You know, I, I was probably one, I was the only person that could quote it. So you guys need to memorize quotes, okay? Because quotes will take I you places. I already quotes. told y'all. Yeah, huh? it stands out. Just 
just like the guy who memorized my shit that I, he quoted me word for word. It stood out and impressed me, you know, like yeah. exactly like the guy that did that to me, like uh, you impressed Ty, like, because it's like, fuck, you know, I yeah. shared it. Someone fucking took the time to actually uh, comprehend it and put it in their memory, you know? Dude, that VIP dinner was $700, man. He just, he yeah. just says, come up. He's, I'm the only guy he told to come up, you know? He's just like automatically right there. This guy I need to pay attention to because he can actually memorize the quote that I put, put it on Instagram just a couple of days ago, you know? So you guys need to pay attention. These guys, they, they put the quotes on their social media because they've memorized it themselves. They had it down in their DNA, you understand? You know, it's already part of their life and they want to share this out there because they know it's going to benefit your life. Now, if you want to go on detours, go ahead and go on detours. John is just trying to do his best to help you go on a straight line, you know, from where you are. But you got to be realistic and be like, this is where I'm in right now. But I'm going to create a plan how I can get there where it's not just going after some cheap thrill, but I'm creating a life around me where I'm drawing the right people to me. And right. people have to want to, to come towards me, you know? So that's what, that's what it's all about. You know, I'm still on the journey. Still humble. I know where I'm at. I know I'm that guy that got left behind, you know, twice before I was the age of 10. So I'm still doing these things. But in, in, in a lot of ways, I think that's, that's for my benefit. You see what I mean? So I'd be setbacks, seemingly setbacks are for my benefit because I know, hey, I, I need to study a little extra harder than everybody else. Okay. I need to take a little bit more action than everybody else, you know. And I know the more I stack these small little building blocks over time, over time, over time, people are gonna be astonished at where the fuck you is just a few years from now, you know? And they're gonna come back to this video and we're gonna have another conversation. Oh, Do you remember yeah. the time when John was at the beach with his girl having that coconut and then uh, we were talking about this and now where we at now because we continue on this path of personal development yeah baby is the the fog is drying up yeah i was on her to she has this uh little sexy mm -hmm. and she got her i told her we were going to go to the beach this morning and surf and yeah. so i hey bring your bathing suit but it's been cold and so now it's warm enough the sun is out so oh it's beautiful now i can see it uh-huh <laughs> uh, hell yeah Man, why do you want a single mom or an older chick when you got these kind of girls that are trying? <laughs> and you're building them up. That's the thing, you know? Dude, yeah. You're building them up. You are, if you want, this is some of the other guys I didn't listen to. Uh -huh. You need to build them from the young, you know, the 18, 19, 20, build them up because the ones that are close to 30, you, you can't. It, it, it's, they, they're too far down, especially if they're single moms already. already and I don't care if people are sending you a bunch of hate comments on this. I don't give a fuck. You know, that's just the truth. I don't get any, surprisingly. Like, it's crazy. I got one on the Costa Rica video saying, you guys are just stay out of this fucking country. That was about it. You know? Mm -hmm. But other than that, I, it's just been positive stuff. Thank God, you know? Like, you know, I'm sure girls are watching it too. I've shared it with some of my girlfriends and they fucking die laughing. <laughs> like, I tell I said everything I'm saying is 100% facts one of my friends is getting married in Australia and I yeah. sent it was fucking dying like, she's all dude I got she's all I'm gonna get all my bridesmaids together and fucking we're gonna have wine and we're gonna watch I'm gonna make them all watch this because just couldn't believe it dying laughing you know absolutely like uh, the other thing um, one thing you told me yesterday is like most of my lessons yet from that video you, we were talking about the common scams that whores and um, prostitutes and whatever you were saying that even though like John is like kind of like opposite of me where he doesn't participate in any of that and yeah. saying how important it is even for a straight edge guy to understand this because even if like you may not be into that or you, you're like one of those guys that you know that I don't pay for this or that you're, no right. matter what you're paying for it one way or another you know yeah like, yeah, and I want to stress on that real quick because there are other underlying problems that people need to deal with right off the bat. It's like, why are you throwing so much attention away to these people? They're not, they don't care for you, you know? 
put that energy back on yourself, work on yourself. You know, I think that's a common denominator. A lot of things, a lot of men, when they go through this because they're putting all their attention. They think that if I just give her a little bit more attention, okay. Mm -hmm. And she could be a good girl or whatever. When she must be rather where she's hitting you up because what you've demonstrated because how much respect you show for yourself, how much value you're putting out there into the world, okay? And you're providing real valuable content, real valuable solutions. And let that be the demonstration of your life, you know? So that's a part of what masculine, uh, masculine essence is all about, where yeah, what you do has to be important, <laughs> you know? When you have that, people will be knocking down your doors just to find you, okay? <laughs> and from doing that, all the, but get your health right first. That's, that's all I gotta say. You gotta get your health. You can make all that money and more, but if you don't have that health in, who or cares? Things. Who cares? You can't who cares? buy your health, man. If you're laying in you a cannot. hospital bed, like Steve you Jobs, cannot. man in the fucking cemetery, you know? Mm -hmm. That should be you, you know? Yep. So what John is trying to teach everybody here is really maximize this time that we have on earth, okay? Mm -hmm. And along the way, we, you want to go about it in a very, very smooth way, as smooth as possible, <laughs> without getting broadsided. And continue to follow his YouTube channel, you know, really pay attention. We watch these videos, take notes, okay? His video was so important, I downloaded it right away because I didn't want somehow this video was going to be gone. Okay. Yeah. That's how serious I took it. It was over a gig, but I still downloaded it. You know, so it's on my computer. So if I need to watch it, even when the internet is down, you have to have the backup for the backup. Um, that should be that, a part of your part of mentality. I taught us the backup is belt and suspenders. So when your belt yeah. breaks, you have suspenders. You always want to have a backup to uh, protect yourself. Like Correct. when I was guys on my luggage packing tips, two is one and one is none. So always mm -hmm. have like a, a contingency plan or a backup in case, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Life. just even like a girl, like my girlfriend, yeah. if she's mad at me or don't want to talk to me, that's fine. It's not the end of the world for me. Look, I right. got other, I got my belt and suspenders, you know, right. here's, uh, I got another one that I can call to hang out with, you know, and I won't be so depressed or, you know, sad, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it'll we'll be sad or hurt or whatever, but it won't be as bad, you know, right. that's what you think. So you always have belt and suspenders. Thank you, John. Really appreciate you, you know, yeah. um, for what you're putting out there. And I don't ask you a whole bunch of questions because I know all the questions that you just, it's already in the videos. <laughs> I just yeah. go ahead. Oh, I know you don't, man. He doesn't ask me any questions, really. Like, always, the thing I like about John is that he doesn't ask me questions. He provides me feedback, like good feedback to like really help. And he like triggers my mind to think of these different, that's why we're on this call right now because he, he's all, bro, she was with me last night in bed. We were smoking a joint. He's all, he just called me. I'm like, he's all, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm laying down with my girl. He's all, all right, I'll make this quick, man. But I just had to tell you, I just watched your video and like, this is what I thought. And I read your book again. Yeah. And I'm, I, won't, I won't take up your time. We were on the phone for over an hour. And she was like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm committed. You know, I told her we got to do this call right away. Look, yeah. it's over, it's, it's about 2.30 in the morning here in Taiwan. Okay. I don't care how late it is. This is how important this information is. So as soon as this all gets uploaded, we're going to put it online. So you guys can really start to take notes. To start to really plan out your life, you know, craft a, yeah. craft a life that you want, okay? Yeah. Craft it like the, the, the right way, not taking a bunch of shortcuts. Because you're going to take a shortcut, you're going to be on another detour. I guarantee you. You're going to be like, I want to lose weight. I'm going to take a bunch of weight loss pills. Shit. Yeah, no, that's I'm going to do my gastric bypass surgery. Shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not retreating the root cause. One question you should be asking, what is the root cause to my plight right now? If I fix the root cause, it's a domino effect. It's going to knock over all the other bullshit I'm currently experiencing. So you have to find out the root causes to your plight. So I'll, 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 I'll end my a little spiel with that. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I know the book I haven't decided yet, but like we were just talking about done beats perfect every time. I'm still adding content to it, but I think it's at mm -hmm. a point where I kind of pre-release it to you guys and 
I'll put it together. I'll put a cover and everything. I'll kind of like have it edited a little bit and uh, I'll put a link to it so you guys can get a copy of it. And if you guys do get it early before I even finish it, if uh, you if I revise it or add more content i'll give you guys the fucking uh updated content for free you know like if you buy it whatever like i was telling john i was like dude i'll sell it for like a dollar or five bucks or ten bucks because i ain't trying to make money off of it but he's all bro no that shit's too valuable like you could even sell it for like 60 bucks people will be fucking buying it bro. Like, yeah. I like you want people that's to take action right people do yeah. not value free or cheap that's the problem <laughs> A lot of people, they get a whole bunch of free stuff. They got whole folder, download photos full of PDFs, full of information, uh -huh. but nobody taking any action. So it's just another ebook on their shelf. Yeah. So you want to work with people that are high performers. They want to perform. They want to take action. That's why, you know, you, you want a high paying client where you want a broke ass client. You know what I'm saying? It's the same. Right. <laughs> yeah. same. Like my clients that I deal with on the credit card thing, like, mm -hmm. man, I love dealing with the ones I can see that it's the same amount of work that I got to deal with for a small business versus a big business. And why would I want to work with a small business? If I'm going to put in the same amount of effort and work. Why don't I just mm -hmm. go out and get clients and like right. get 10 times more and right. less, less complaints. It's the same thing with like broke people, like mm -hmm. wealthy people that are investors and whatever. They don't complain about shit. They pay, they see the value they pay. Whereas a broke right. person, about the price they complain they want a refund all this shit that ain't even yeah. worth it you know and it's it's true. that's right like that's why i was saying like man i'll just give it for a dollar you know he's all don't mm -hmm. do that he's all yeah. like qualify your lease qualify your customers you know because yeah. you want to keep people that are motivated continue on that momentum you know so that that's what i would recommend you know just save yourself some headaches because if you want to grow a group, you know, it's just people that are continually taking action. If you want to find a thousand people like me, you're going to have to charge. You're going to have to charge. Right. Yeah. They, they impress you without even like buying the book. He'll impress me with, you know, certain things like the, the, the criticisms and the feedback that he gives me is valuable, you know, mm -hmm. because he has time to read everything that I wrote and digest it and comprehend it he actually took the time to watch the videos take notes and shit that's you know? right so that to me is valuable and like he doesn't ask for anything in return i don't ask him for anything you know there's this mutual um respect absolutely you know? so you know like guys i hope you guys like have learned any if i if i said anything to offend anybody i ain't trying to offend it if you were one of the guys like that i didn't really answer or whatever uh, for a redundant question, you know, I ain't trying to like be a dick or anything. It's not my intention. I just, you know, the, the information was covered and like, you know, it, pay closer attention, take notes, mm -hmm. watch it again, read it again, whatever it is, you know, and uh, apply that to your life. You know, that's the way you get successful. You know, these these mistakes you make here are the same mistakes you do everything. Like how you do one thing is how you do everything. I keep telling people that's mm -hmm. important. So. See, what you said right there, I'm just going to have to bring it back to the book, okay? Uh -huh. This is from The Secret Entourage. Okay. You have to be an a-hole a lot more often than you think. Being nice and sweet to people is honorable, but often leads nowhere, okay? <laughs> In order to find long-term success, learn to be an a-hole, but never forget to be fair toward those that are on the same path as you fighting for the same outcome. There so, we go. Here we go. Yeah, shit. That's also in the book. So. Yeah, there's guys that don't know uh, Secret Entourage. They were the ones that turned me into, uh, that introduced me to Ty Lopez, the guy Pedgeman and Alan. Yeah. Them. I, I went to their meetups and stuff. And then, uh, like, I watched all their interviews. So, like, what Secret Entourage was, was this uh, group on Instagram. They would post, like, the, the motivation shit, the luxury shit. And I loved it, you know? And they yeah. had this put together that you can become a member and watch the interviews from all the successful young guys at the uh, entrepreneurs that they interview. and Pedgman's a good fucking interviewer man he asks the right questions he's engaging and like they interviewed Ty on there one day and like mm -hmm. when they're talking when they were talking to Ty when I was watching the video I'm like damn this guy makes sense like I can relate mm -hmm. to a lot of the shit that uh he is talking about and like I remember me being kind of 
like uh, cocky at the time because I was at a point in my life where I was already like banging chicks. I was living in the Philippines, just partying every day, and I thought I made it in life. And like mm -hmm. I was like, "Fuck, I don't need nobody." And I was kind of uh, I lost that humbleness to me. And then when I uh, I went to the Philippines, I noticed it. I was there. I was around a bunch of ballers in the Philippines, but it mm -hmm. wasn't because the, they weren't right. self. -made. You know, they, right. they were all in rich their families money. And yeah, it was cool hanging out with them and partying. But like we didn't have that connection of being like an entrepreneur, whereas like I built up my business by myself. So they don't understand what it feels like to build something from the ground up and yeah. like uh, make it turn into something that you could be proud of, you know, that takes care of you. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. they spend money, but they ain't spending their money that they earn. They spend their family. They're all cool guys. Like, I love them, man. Like, sure. They were cool. Sure. Like, they gave me all the hookups. They took me everywhere. They introduced me to all a lot of girls and stuff. But mm -hmm. I didn't share that bond. And then, like, um, I remember being, like, I don't know if cocky is the word or, like, arrogant in a way to mm -hmm. where, like, I saw I was following the Secret Entourage on Instagram. And they told us about their membership thing. And I remember asking on Qora, that, that, that platform where you ask a question, I yeah. asked if entourage was legit or is it a scam there i was like well, this was all before this entrepreneurial shit that uh ty lopez and all this shit that i studied where i was thinking things were a scam i was scared mm -hmm. to spend a couple hundred bucks thinking i was gonna get ripped off and i remember alan the one of the partners of secret entourage he's the asian guy he mm -hmm. met he answered my question he's all no it's not a scam man and like we we really vet the people we interview all of them are successful self-made they're young you know and so i spent a couple hundred bucks to become a member of their fucking um their program and their group and then from that point on life just changed like i took the initiative to invest and put myself in a position to want to improve and that's what brought me back to america is like i got tired of yeah. you know part i wanted to be around like entrepreneurs that were like that can understand me you know because like in the Philippines, it's very hard to become self-made because it's a third right. world, very poor. Like there's not much opportunity. Whereas America, you can become self-made a lot easier or a first world mm -hmm. country with more opportunities. And so when I came back to America, it felt good to surround myself with like mm -hmm. guys like Pedgman and Allen and whatever, from what thing, the information they were sharing, man, that shit was life changing and like invested mm -hmm. the money and it changed my mind. And it made me realize that I ain't shit and it humbled me that mm -hmm. yeah, I thought I was doing good in life. I was banging all these girls and, you know, partying every day, but that wasn't shit. Like, and then I started hanging around these guys that were way more successful, seeing what yeah. they were you know, having more purpose again in my life. And the, the most important thing is it humbled me. And then it made me mm -hmm. more open-minded again. I didn't think like, I didn't, I, I got rid of that, that thing of thinking like I knew it all at that time. Right. You know? And right. I think that that shows on the camera now that people hit me up a lot. And when they message me and email me, they say, yeah, I love it that you're humble ain't trying to fucking brag or show off or anything, you know? And like, I think that's part of the lesson that I got from when I was in the Philippines of that kind of guy that I was, that thought I was the shit that thought I was yeah. already, shit. I didn't need anybody. Yeah. I thought I knew everything. I didn't need advice. Like, right. I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Kind of like that attitude. Yeah. But now, yeah that secret entourage thing and meeting those guys like completely humbled me and showed me that I ain't as good as I thought I was and that there's mm -hmm. a lot more to learn and that it opened up my mind and then meeting all these other guys and investing my money in Thai. What from, from questioning one investment that I thought was a scam to dropping 25 grand on something that everyone else thinks is a scam. I can understand why they say it's a scam because I was mm -hmm. the same way questioning a couple hundred bucks for the secret entourage, but I fucking mm -hmm. put the money into it. And I don't even know why I was even being scared about it because I'll drop a couple hundred bucks on a bottle or going partying. Yeah. yeah. But yet for something <laughs> that's what most people do. Come a thing. I was like kind of worried about it. And it's like, man, why the fuck was I even thinking like that? Right now on a course, I will I'll drop a thousand bucks on a course if I think I can oh, yeah. get one fucking thing out of it that I can apply oh, yeah. for my life. And then I make do a little thousand time. bucks back for a connection that I make. You yeah. know? So worth it. Like, guys, don't be cheap. Okay, so here's mm -hmm. one thing I taught us. He calls it RRD. Don't be cheap on things that RRD. Rust, rot, or depreciate. depreciate. Yeah, be, he's a be cheap on that, but don't be cheap on things that don't RRD, like like right. cars, like boats. Your education, you know, your own like, personal development, right? RRD are those things, like shoes, cars, clothes. Oh, right. 
all depreciate. You don't want you want to be cheap on those, but don't be cheap on education, a book. He talks that's about right. the, the Charlie Munger book that's like 75 or 100 bucks. And then people mm-hmm. are like, fuck, that's too expensive. I'm buying that book. But yet they have Michael Jordan shoes on. <laughs> that spent fucking 150 bucks on, 200 bucks. Or they have an yeah. iPhone that's $1,000 or more than 1000 bucks. Oh, yeah. Like, they don't spend on a billionaire sharing his fucking thing. So you got to kind of, that, that's one of the things that changed my mind. And you guys got to change your mentality to kind of like be the same way as that, you know? Like, absolutely. Fuck, turns into so many we shared a bunch of lessons on this man and it didn't it didn't intend to, to for it to turn into this we, i just wanted to talk to you and get like what what your um your thoughts and your feedback on on the book and the video and stuff but i'm glad we did this this interview i'm glad too i i knew this was the direction that was going to take before we had this whole conversation i knew we were going to talk about the book but i also know it's going to be more about the book because it's always more about the book People are seeing these highlights, but you don't understand all the work prior to this, all the stuff that you had to work through in your own personal development, in your own old ways of thinking, you had to unravel, you had to create new neural connections in your mind, new ways of thinking. So this is all part of it and you can't avoid it. So for people that just think that you're gonna get a quick solution for X, right? Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Happen. watch this whole video multiple times take multiple uh, notes all that, the that's, i will probably go through this myself you know yeah. just uh going through it just because there's there's valuable content so i can look at myself and say how can i deliver this better next time how can i right. share exactly. with somebody else you know in a more clearer way right because i can't get it right the first time but like 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 joe salad done is better than perfect Right. Yeah, no, done beats perfect every time. Every time. Done yeah. beats perfect every time. every time. And it's true. Yeah. It's true. Uh, so in closing, what would you want to close? Uh, dude, we talk about everything. Uh, I think just uh, being more open-minded, be humble. That's very important. And that will change and be willing to invest. Like don't be cheap on the RRD. Don't be cheap on the stuff that doesn't RRD. You know, Russ Rod right. about that. Things that don't Russ Rod depreciate that appreciate that's what you don't want to be cheap on like don't have a big tv have a big library that's super important that's right. i don't watch tv the only reason i have the tv there is to fucking for the girls when they come over to play music right. and watch videos and shit you know or to see my pictures flash across the screen that's about all i don't watch tv i don't really watch series i go to the movies yeah for my entertainment mm-hmm. i'll take the girls out to watch the movies yeah I, that's part of like what i like doing but like i don't binge watch netflix i don't like to me i it blows my mind how much time people can waste on netflix but not put an hour into building something for themselves that they want to do they want to become rich they want to become but they spend all their free time on netflix or like on facebook or instagram or tiktok and watching other people do shit with their lives and like before you know it the whole day has gone by and they've accomplished nothing you Mm. know so Mm. you know well uh Man, John, I appreciate this. We're going to do this again. And like, for those guys that want a copy of the book, I'm going to work on that. I'll put together a website. And um, if you do already want a copy of the book, I'll try and get you a, 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 I don't know, like a pre-copy or whatever you guys want to call it for before it's even made. Like, yep. me up. And then I'll also um, put, to, put you a link for my Instagram that I made for my 420 John 69 um, lifestyle. That like guys, this is only my personal account. Like, if you look at my videos, it's just me fucking around with my friends. That's what this, uh, this what this channel is, and now it's turning into something. People just like the shit that I do, and they're starting to fucking, you know, follow mm-hmm. me because of it. like it was never an intention for me to do anything with this. And like, if you see, like, you could go see all my old fucking videos, the shit I've been fucking around with for a long mm-hmm. fucking time. Like, that's why, like, I didn't know what to make my my. Uh, my channel name so i just chose like the 420 and my name in 69 because it mm-hmm. kind of says it all in just a few words like a few numbers and a few words like i like smoking weed it has my name and the 69 even though i don't do 69 with all the girls it just you know the the reference that it makes it's kind of like sums me up all together you know so right like i appreciate you guys that take the time to watch this that reach out you know yeah comment and like even though i don't ask you to share or like or comment or whatever i appreciate the ones that actually do and the ones that take time to reach out to me or tell me about your adventure or how it helped you you know i really love i get a kick out of that i like 
Like when everybody hits me up after they go to Costa Rica and they tell me how my video mm -hmm. helped them influence them to take that trip by themselves and to go, even though they've been wanting to, and people have been telling them they just didn't do it, but they got the courage to do it because of my video. Man, right. that makes me feel like a proud father. Like I really like that made it, that makes it all worth it for me for the time that I put into this shit, yeah. you know, to do it. Absolutely. Like, like I said, I don't need the monetary reward or whatever, because like my life is good. Like whatever I make from this ain't going to fucking change my life. You know what right. I mean? Like, That's right. But what does change my life is the connections I make with you guys that mm -hmm. you know, like you guys can be like a John that I meet one day and I give you some advice fucking completely changes his fucking dude, man. Like I remember, like I, I can't stress it enough, man. This guy fucking changed his life. He's, he's self-employed now, digital nomad, doesn't work for nobody, works for him fucking self. I told mm -hmm. him to get away from that fucking company he was doing all the work for and he fucking yeah. listened and converted everything man like I, I'm, pr I'm proud of this guy and like he's accelerated faster than me too and like his health transformation too that's where like i need still to, on I the journey fucking, still on the journey yeah and, always like, humble always humble yeah whether on the financial journey health journey it's always uh another stepping stone there's always another challenge ahead so i always just keep my open mind yeah. like you said i don't want to be like oh this worked for me the last four years obviously uh -huh. it's going to next for the next four years because right. you know, in the business that we're in, it changes so quickly, especially yep. in online marketing, online business. So you always got to be able to navigate, right? You got to be able to morph into a different person, different being altogether. So that's what it takes. So. All right, man. Well, I think we covered everything. And no, uh, we covered it all. But uh, yeah. thank you so oh, much, John. I, I made her sit here the entire time and wait for me and like... <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Yeah. All right, baby. Ya terminamos. Dice bye bye. Invitar a la gente. You guys have a wonderful day. Venir a México. Oh my God. México es muy bonito. Mexico is beautiful, and so are the girls. Encontrar a muchas chicas como yo. She said you'll meet a lot of girls like her. <laughs> Young, sexy, fun, stress free. <laughs> Don't expect nothing. No drama. Man, I fucking mm -hmm. love it here. That's why I live here. That's why I left the Philippines and I never went back because Mexico got me, man. Like, and you, you'll, it may not be Mexico for you guys, but you'll find some place like that is your paradise, like what I found, you know? That's right. And I'm trying to help you guys achieve. So, you know, John, I appreciate that. We'll come back again and uh, touch base. And then touch base. And, Absolutely. Uh, maybe if you want to give out an email or something, if guys want to reach out to you too. Um, yeah, I can uh, send it. Maybe you can put it in the description. I'll put it yeah. in the description below. Like my emails are in the description and I'll put his information there too. So if you guys want questions, you want to ask him, you know, this guy's a Facebook marketing genius. He's digital marketing. If you have questions about that, he can fucking answer them for you. He, he uh, does, uh, he reads charts on crypto and stocks. He can help you mm -hmm. with that if you have questions, um, you know, like and health being ripped. This guy, yeah. man. <laughs> We, you, you can ask this guy too on that too. Like I need to ask him because I'm, I kind of lose discipline drinking with these girls and eating out with them. And that's why I kind of fuck up, you know, Brother, I got you. Out, I'm, got I'm, you. I'm disciplined. I want you to be so fucking ripped, John, you know, I mean, people will be just be so scorned at themselves and they'll see you out in the street, you know, uh, with your six pack, you know what I'm uh, saying? And they'll be like, this guy right here, how the does he do this? You know, yeah. You know, the beautiful women. Da, 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 da. Right What's now, I got a keg. What? I got to convert it to the six pack. Oh, oh I, I, I got you, bro. Bro, I got you. I got you. I got All you. right. Cool, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Amazing weekend ahead. And, and uh, we'll touch for the face. people that made it this far, we appreciate you like sitting here and listening. And like, we hope you got some kind of value and learned some lessons out of this. Because then. If, if we help one, at least one of you guys out there inspire you or teach you a lesson, then this is all worth it. That's all it takes, man. If we make a That's difference right. in life, then we achieve being the lighthouse instead of the tugboat. So That's right. All right. Hit us up. Let us know if you want a, a copy of the book. And if you want to be on the list for like when it's ready, uh, shoot us an email too. And then uh, make sure you get ready uh, to be on that when it is for real, like legit that I'm ready to release it. All right, guys. Take All care, right. John. Take care now. All Gracias, right. baby. Por esperar todo este tiempo. Uh -huh. Bye. Dale una beso. Uh -huh. <laughs>